Let's be honest, there's nothing really safe about riding horses. Horses can spook or buck at a moment's notice. So in this video, we're gonna cover four ways that you can be a better rider and not fall off your horse should they spook or buck. So I'm gonna use Kara here to demonstrate a couple of um, out of position things that riders tend to do that could make it easier to fall off if your horse were to spook or buck. So the first one that we're gonna show is the rider does not have their core engaged and they're pinching with their knees. So they're kind of trying to hang on by gripping with their knees. Okay, so Kara's gonna try to hold on and try to stay on but using just gripping with your knees. Okay, and we're just gonna observe what it takes to pull her off balance. So you can see it created a hinge point where she was gripping in the saddle with her knees. Now, the next thing we're gonna do that is also common is she's not gonna engage her core, she's gonna have her knees light, but this time she's gonna extend her arms and lean slightly forward. This is a typical position that riders go in when they're about to, um, uh, say, canter their horse or something like that. So, arms extended, you're gonna lean just slightly forward, but your knees are light this time, okay? That's just Kind of try to resist and see, <laughs> okay, pretty hard when you're up there, okay? So there's, when our head gets a, uh, in front of our hips, it makes it really easy to topple forward. So we gotta make sure that we're not leaning forward. Now this time, um, we're gonna use correct position. So keep your knees light. I wanna see you bring your elbows back in, okay? You're gonna engage your core, your focus is up, and you're gonna stay on your balance point in the saddle, which also means if you're on your balance point, you can reach back with your hand and be able to touch the horse's hip. So without leaning back, See if you can reach back and touch his hip. You guys can see she can reach that. That tells you you're not leaning too far forward. Now, go ahead and lean forward just a little bit just to demonstrate, and I'll try to touch his hip. And you can see she can kind of barely touch it, but it's a little harder to reach there. So, knees are light, your core is engaged, your elbows are back, and to see kind of what, what resistance you can offer me this time. So you can see it's much harder to move her off the saddle at that point. So this is a, a thing that just, when you're riding, Try to take a section of your ride, five to 10 minutes, and really focus on you and how you're riding. Um, horse, you know, we can, we can do all the prep work we want to try to prevent horses from spooking or bucking, but the reality is they're a prey animal and these things are gonna come up at various times. So it's about being prepared, not lucky. In this next section, I'm gonna bring in my wife, Emily Rose of Reaching Strides Equine Rehab. She's a horse physical therapist and a human physical therapist, and she's gonna to talk to us about how to engage our core and be stronger riders. Talking about how to ride a buck or a spook, and I'm gonna talk about it from a physical therapist's perspective or a rider's, rider biomechanics perspective. So when I think about being able to ride a buck or a spook, which is kind of an unexpected large movement, I straight away go to core strength for the rider. There's other areas that we're gonna to touch on as well in this video, but one of the main ones is the core. Now our core needs to be strong because it's our main shock absorption center. And if you think about a buck or a spook, that large motion causes a lot of force through your body, probably the horse's body too, but we need our core to be able to absorb that shock. So a good way to think about engaging your core when you're riding your horse, there's a couple of steps to it. First step is I want you to think about pulling your belly button in towards your spine. And it's a nice gentle contraction. I'm doing it right now. I'm not sucking it in so that I can't breathe while I do it. It's just a really gentle pull and you should feel your abdominals in the front of your stomach tighten. Now we add a second step onto that and that's a pelvic floor contraction. So I want you to feel like all of these muscles under here in your groin area tighten, okay? One of the best ways, uh, analogies I can give you for how to engage your pelvic floor is to think about um, stopping the flow of pee. If you were going to the bathroom and someone walked in on you and you said, oh, I'm not going, you feel all those muscles tighten in your pelvic floor. So can you put step one of pull your belly button in towards your spine together with step two of engage your pelvic floor? And that turns on your core. You should also feel some muscles in your low back turn on when you do that. Those are also part of your core because we think of our core as a box. The front, the back, the bottom, and the top. And the top is our diaphragm that we get from breathing. So simple exercise to do while you're riding your horse to think about engaging your core to be able to handle the buck or the spook better. 
I hope you guys are enjoying this video so far. We have a lot more great content on my Patreon page. If you're interested in having more support from myself and Emily on your horsemanship journey, go ahead and check that page out. I'll leave a link in the description below. Let's get back to the video. Another component that we need to think about when we're riding the buck or the spook is having good balance. So I'm gonna show you a quick mounted exercise you can do to develop your balance while riding. But I'm also gonna show you in another part of the video balance exercises that you can do on the ground that will transfer to riding in the saddle. So one of the best ways we can work on our balance is standing up in the stirrups. Now this also requires core strength, which we touched on earlier, um, having a good strong core to tolerate that buck or that spook. But do you have the core strength too to stand up in the stirrups and keep yourself up from falling forwards or falling backwards? Now I would challenge all of you, if you can do it at a standstill, can you get your horse moving even just at a walk? And can you stand up in the stirrups? Now notice I didn't pull myself up with the front of the saddle or the pad. I didn't pull on his neck, but I can stay here standing independently as he moves around. And this is a balance challenge for my balance systems of my body. Now you'll see it again as I walk away from you. You can see me having to respond by shifting weight left or right, forward or backwards to stay centered over the horse. So that challenges our sensory systems and our inner ear systems as we're riding. And those are two of our three balance systems that we need to make sure are developed. So I give you that exercise, try it at a standstill, try it at a walk, even try it at a trot if you feel comfortable and you've mastered it at a standstill and a walk and work on your balance in the saddle. So I mentioned we would also have some simpler balance exercises that you can do on the ground that will translate to your riding. So let's start with a simple exercise of can I stand with a narrow base of support, right? If you look at most people, we stand feet about shoulder width apart. But as we narrow our base of support, it challenges our balance systems more. So that's step one. Can you stand with a narrow base of support? If that's easy, then I'll progress to narrow base of support, but a semi-tandem stance, making sure I'm looking up. I can even focus on an object in the distance if I need to. Then I could go to, can I stay in a tandem stance? And here's where I start to feel my ankles wobbling just a little bit. You probably can't see it inside my boots, but that's a balance strategy. So if that's easy for you, the next thing I want you to do, having a support close by with all of these, is to try single leg standing balance. Can I let go of the support and maintain balance on one foot? <laughs> Blooper. <laughs> All right, so we've got our single leg standing balance. Now, if that gets easy, we're gonna progress to an even harder challenge where we use a compliant squishy surface to challenge our balance. You could use a pillow. This is a balance pad that I get off of Amazon but we'll start with having a hand support on the wall, get ourselves used to this different surface. Now, can I let go? And you guys can probably see the wobble down in my ankle as I'm standing on this. And this is challenging my balance systems all the way up the chain, even into my core. So I'm thinking about belly button in, pelvic floor is engaged to help me balance. So, that's a simple progression of how you can challenge your balance system, starting from easiest to hardest, and then we go to our mounted exercises on the horse. If you wanna take your balance to the next level and you wanna make it extra challenging because you know you're gonna be riding some more unruly horses, or just because you're an overachiever and you like to do things the hard way, <laughs> um, we're gonna go ahead and try this balance board here, okay? So this one is kinda of extra difficult. This provides a lot more challenge to the balance situation. This is one that I like to use for myself. I ride a lot of unruly horses. I also like to do some things like surfing and uh, wakeboarding, stuff like that. So this is a great way for me to work on my balance. And um, it's also a lot of fun. So whether it's jumping on a trampoline or walking a narrow high beam or standing on a balance board, find a way to challenge yourself separate from your horse so that when you go back to your horse, you're gonna be an even better, safer rider. 
So another strategy that you are gonna to wanna to use is a one rain stop. Now the theory behind the one rain stop is that before the horse gets building ahead of steam in a spook or in a buck or a bolt or something, that the rider has very instinctive reflexes where they lift and slide their hand down the rein, bend the horse to a stop and push on the horn, okay? So you push on the horn to stay on your balance point and keep yourself um, in the saddle and you do the one rein stop to let your horse know to stop. So the point of this is not to be on a runaway horse and then try to bend them to a stop. I feel like that's a little bit of a misconception about the one rein stop. The point is to have really good reflexes where this is instinctual for you and you're gonna bend them to a stop. So let me demonstrate this a couple times. And the main thing that you're gonna to have to take away from this is you need to practice this. I have done thousands of one rein stops when I'm teaching horses to do this. So this is again about being prepared, not lucky. This isn't about getting your horse running around and then seeing if you can shut them down. So you're gonna ride on a loose rein. You're gonna lift and slide one hand down the reins Pull that, that rein to your thigh and push on the horn with your free hand. When the horse quits moving and they settle with all four feet and then give to the bit, you're gonna turn it loose, okay? So hopefully a lot of you have heard this before. The question is whether or not you've practiced this enough times that it will be muscle memory for you in that split second moment when your horse decides to do something that might be hazardous to your health, okay? So you have to be like a ninja when you do this. Lift, slide, Bend, stab your thigh, push on the horn, wait for the horse to stop. I estimate that you need to practice this about a thousand times for this to be that reflexive for you. <clears throat> I also think you can do about a hundred of these in a half an hour. So that's about five hours of work. That might save you from an ambulance ride someday. So put in the work, practice the one rein stop, use good technique, Lift with your one hand, slide your free hand down the rein, then push on the horn and stab your thigh, and that's gonna help keep you safe on the trail, in the arena, should a horse decide that they don't appreciate what you're offering them. <laughs> Thanks for tuning into this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. We'll see you guys on the next one.